Welcome Exiles to the build guide for Righteous Fire Trickster. Today I will be going over the finalized version of the build. That being said, I didn't actually end up getting enough currency to really make a min-max version of the build and potentially later on in the league I'll come back to this build just to min-max it to really delete bosses. But for now we're going to settle for what is a semi-budgety version of the build which is still finalized to be able to do endgame content smoothly and well. Now let's get into the gear pieces, all the possible alternatives versus going from cheap to most expensive, as well as how to craft these gear options and get the best of the best for hopefully a cheaper price than you would simply just buying the items. To start off, Calm's Heart. This is the best in slot uh, Righteous Fire chest piece. Initially, you might start out with an Ambu's Charge or a Belly of the Beast. Those are fine, but once you get enough budget, uh, possibly about an X, I believe is how much Calm's Heart are going for currently, I'd recommend getting one of these. Optimally, you want one with a 50% increased damage implicit. The way to have a somewhat high likelihood of getting a good implicit on a Calm's Heart is turning in Pride Before the Call cards at a with a level 2 character. With that, you have a 1 in 5 chance of hitting the 50% increased damage implicit, a 1 in 5 to hit increased life, which those both would be good odds for getting decent implicits. Unfortunately, this doesn't always happen, you might end up some with something like mine, which is energy shield. But still, that's the best way to get a min-max version of the comms heart. For our weapon, ideally we want plus 1 to fire spells, fire dot multi, and as much increased damage to fire or elemental damage as possible. The best base for this is an opal or void scepter for the 40% increased elemental damage implicit. Then you'd probably craft it with scorch fossils until you hit plus 1 to fire gems, and able to also craft on fire dot multi. You can craft up to 20% fire dot multi on a scepter with a betrayal craft. So what I have here would be achievable if you just found an item with plus one fire spell and then craft it on fire dot multi. Keep in mind, and this goes for every gear piece you have in Righteous Fire, you do not under any circumstances want any flat fire damage to your spells. If you have flat fire damage to your orb of storms, it will mess up your elemental equilibrium and thus brick basically your damage entirely. Instead of doing twice the amount of damage with Elemental Equilibrium, it'll make you do basically half the damage for some of something like Shaper. You'll go from damaging Shaper like he has zero fire resistance to damaging Shaper like he has 75% fire resistance, which would cut your damage significantly. So never forget, avoid flat fire to spells at all costs on any items. For your rings, best in slot is crafting an opal ring with Essences of Anger to get the fire damage uh, suffix. You can do these until you get some decent resistances with it, as, long, as well as life, and maybe finish them up with harvest crafts. But if you can't afford things like these, uh, I also bought a coral ring with, that just had chaos res and strength, which are things I needed for the build. So you can also fill in these rings with initially just items you need to fix your resistances or fix your strength and then upgrade later on with Essences of Anger when you get the chance. For your belt, there's no sense in not getting a decent belt for Righteous Fire. Always get an Elder Leather belt, at least item level 84. 84 gets you Elemental Resist Tier 1. Um, any higher than that is really kind of unnecessary and will just add extra costs. If you have a lot of budget, you can go for a Stygian Vise, but if you don't have a lot of budget, stick with a Leather belt, you'll be fine. Craft it simply with Pristine Fossils, and if you're doing Divine Flesh and you need more Chaos Resistance, you can also use a, a two socket resonator and use Pristine and Aberrant to, cat, to craft your leather belt. Going for high life, high increased life, and life recovery rate. Life recovery rate is pretty much non-negotiable here as it's very important to sustain Righteous Fire. For your helmet, you want an item level 82 Elder Helmet base, ideally a strength base so you cannot hit mana because that will add a bunch of extra prefix waiting that will block your ability to get conk effect as often and you want to spam it with essences of horror until you hit conk effect or burning damage that gives you a six link helmet ideally if you get conk effect then you're set up to yes, make yourself a seven link helmet and the way you're going to do it is you're going to take the helmet i have here and then you would change the cold resist to fire resistance so you're blocking fire resistance and then you're going to be exalting on a fire modifier in order to get a 50 percent chance at getting burning damage at that point you would have a seven link helmet and you could move on to having efficacy in your setup as well that's one huge upgrade I could make on this build but I never got a fire exalt so I never got a chance of making the upgrade for the shield initially a great option is the mute wind pin it for the instant war cries in the onslaught it made mapping really fast I went all the way through red maps with it fine eventually though I did decide it made it it made it too rippy I was losing a decent amount of damage not having a plus one fire on my shield and really, it ultimately made it a little bit harder to do Awakener, so I swapped it out for a plus one fire spell with life and some resistances. This made it very consistent for me to do Awakener level 8, Shaper, Elder, all the endgame content. 
So when you get a chance, crafting one of these shields would be good. I tried to do it on Shaper Base for the chance of getting plus 2 max all res. At the end of the day, you really don't need this and can just craft on some random shield or simply buy one that already has plus 1 fire, life, and some decent resistances. For the boots, we want the regen 2% life if you were hit recently in chant. Best case scenario for these would also be getting it to a Warlord and a crusader influence so you could get plus two max fire res along with two percent regen and then good life and movement speed but that's a much more expensive option initially i would just start out with the two percent regen craft some okay mods on it call it a day when you get more currency you can upgrade from there for your gloves you really want fire dot multi and you want high life that's pretty much the two important things there if you can get additional resistances that is also good for crafting these hunter glove base you want to do scorched and pristine two socket resonator fossil crafting for the ambient slot you want to start out with something that just covers your life and resistances then ideally when you get more currency you want to have a plus two amulet and eventually after that a plus two amulet with fire dot multi fire damage regen and life so to start off with you grab a hunter amulet you alteration spam until you get plus one to intelligence skill gems and then you grab a marble amulet and you alteration spam until you get plus one to all fire skill gems then you can awaken these two together to get a plus two to righteous fire which gives a lot of base fire damage over time per second as well as it gives you radius the more levels you get on righteous fire after the awaken orb combination you can fix the prefix generally unless it hits something like rarity or mana unfortunately that cannot be target an old with harvest crafting and in that case you might have to awaken orb another amulet but if you hit something like defense or life you can always recraft those with harvest mods until you get the perfect life roll once you have perfect prefixes you want to clear the suffixes either with by opening up a suffix for a target a null or target a null all the suffixes off until you have no suffixes and then eventually you will craft your own fire res and then you will use a targeted fire exalt twice to hit fire damage and fire dot multi and then you can finish the amulet up by crafting Betrayal, Regen Life, and then quality it with Fertile Catalyst to get the ideal amulet. Now here, I am outlining the order in which I pick up nodes when I was leveling the character. Feel free to copy this or copy my passive tree and take nodes in whichever order you so please. This is just what I did when I leveled. I rushed up Elemental Equilibrium, I rushed up, I rushed up Elemental Overload for the damage, and then eventually I, sp I spec'd out of that and repathed when I had more passives because I wanted to immediately have those bonuses to Righteous Fire the sooner the better. Now you notice on the tree, I have Divine Flesh. This is a very important notable. This allows us to basically take 50% of our elemental damage as chaos, which means 50% of our righteous fire is taken as chaos. Um, this is a good way to mitigate righteous fire degen, as well as is a good way to mitigate just j damage in general. A lot of elemental damage gets completely mitigated very well with divine flesh and it's very strong defensively it makes a lot of boss fights a lot less threatening especially boss fights with things that have penetration because divine flesh takes something that would have like 25 or 10 or 15 penetration and it completely negates that from the boss attack for example shaper balls have penetration 50 percent of that damage it will not penetrate your resistance because you're taking it as chaos damage rather than cold damage for our cluster setup it's all about burning bright two jewel passives on the large and then going into medium clusters with the jewel socket burning bright and another fire damage notable now they are planning to change the cluster jewels so that two sockets are guaranteed every single time when i was rolling this jewel myself just to get burning bright and two jewel sockets i spent over 250 chaos of crafting along with using a lightning exalt to get vengeful commander so that way i'd have a burning bright on the travel node this should be much easier after the patch where they force two sockets onto the jewels so do not craft this before that patch comes you'll waste a bunch of currency just wait for the patch to drop where you always have two jewel sockets and you'll be sitting pretty Looking over our links, we have Righteous Fire, linked to Elemental Focus, linked to Burning Damage, and linked to Inspiration. If you have a 6-link helmet with Burning Damage instead of Conk Effect, you will place Burning Damage with either Increased AoE or Conk Effect. For a double Curse on Hit setup, we have Orb of Storms, linked to Flammability, linked to Curse on Hit, and linked to Despair. I'm not 100% sure Despair is more damage than Elemental Weakness. You could probably test these two out in POB to get the exact numbers. I just decided I'd rather have Despair. I went with it. I didn't actually go into POB and test for 100% sureness that it's the best one to use. For our gloves, we have Malevolence and Purity of Fire, as well as Scorching Ray linked to Inspiration. So linking Scorching Ray to Inspiration allows us to generate our Inspiration charges, which allows Righteous Fire to get the benefit from Inspiration support linked in the helmet. For a shield charge setup, it's a classic shield charge, fat fortify, and faster attacks. For our last setup, we have Flame Dash, Enduring Cry, and Portal Gem, which I swapped to my other character, but 
Portal gems basically used because we cannot be bothered picking up portal scrolls or using portal scrolls because we are lazy. For our flask setup, to start off with, I'm going to catch you a bit off guard here and I'm going to be using a small life flask. The reason for this is small life flasks cost the least amount of charges to use. With reduced charges use, life flasks only cost 5 charges, whereas other life flasks cost 15. The reason for using this is so that we can head generate charges with Rislatha, which only needs 6 seconds to generate enough charges to use a life flask, which can be crucial to surviving a boss fight. The longer you have to wait for a life flask to recharge to turn off Righteous Fire, the more danger you can be in in boss fights, so a lot of times it's an emergency to turn off your Righteous Fire, and that's why we use the smaller life flask, so that way we can proc our turn off burning as much as possible whenever we need it in a boss fight. For our three defensive flasks, we use granite for more fizz reduction, along with sulfur for regen on the consecrated ground, along with ruby flasks to reduce the fire damage we take over time. Uh, this is interchangeable based on if you like more other defensive flasks better, feel free to swap them out for whatever you feel, but I would recommend using immunity to bleed with immunity to curse and immunity to freeze. Those are commonly the most threatening ailments for me when I play Path of Exile and those are the ones I prefer but also something like Immunity Shock could go a long way and lastly we use Quicksilver with Adrenaline that means we have the movement speed suffix which allows us to really move through maps quickly and to continue to charge down the content for our ascendancy we first select Patient Reaper then Prolonged Pain followed by Swift Killer and Weave the Arcane Patient Reaper gives us a ton of recovery rate while mapping, making us never really have much sustain problems when we're mapping even with minus max or less recovery rate maps, along with Prolonged Pain, giving us a lot more damage for our Righteous Fire as well as duration on our Righteous our Val Righteous Fire skill effect. Swift Killer gives us a lot of attack speed and damage while we're mapping because we'll have max frenzy and power charges. Power charges make us so we can keep Elemental Overload up much easier, as well as frenzy charges just giving us a lot more damage for our Righteous Fire. Lastly, Weaver the Arcane just gives us a bunch of attack speed so we can be more mobile while mapping. Now looking at an overview kind of perspective of the character, I played this and my overall consensus after playing Trickster was it moves fast, it does the most damage. But at the end of the day, it's probably not the best, most well-rounded boss killer. Um, I personally had a lot of fun with it. I still would recommend it highly. If you want to map fast, you want to do damage fast, I could do all the content, Awakener, Elder, Shaper, all of it wasn't much of a problem once I got Divine Flesh going. But that being said, if you want more consistent sustain, then you want to go with something like Chieftain or Juggernaut. I would say these are definitely the, still the two top picks besides Trickster for me. So I'm going to end up leaving a rough POB with my estimation of what you should go for tree-wise if you wanted to do a Chieftain or a Juggernaut variant. I would say Jug's the most tanky, Chieftain is a middle ground with great sustain and decent damage, but not quite as much damage as Trickster and moves a little bit slower. So whether if you want to go for most tanky is Jug, I'd say Chieftain somewhere in the middle for tankiness and damage, kind of a mid-ground pick, whereas Trickster's all, Trickster's all about a more active play style, moving and doing damage. For the Pantheon, I'd recommend Soul of Arakali for the recovery rate you can get from removing your Burning of Righteous Fire, along with Soul of Rislatha to give you the edge on recovering those Life Flash charges to constantly remove Burn in a boss fight. For the Bandit, we killed all because we didn't really like any of the passives too much, and we liked having an extra two passive points. I believe this wraps up the character in its entirety. Hopefully I didn't leave anything out. Occasionally I'll forget things here. I definitely was rushing to try to get this video put together. Hopefully you guys still enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the character, feel free to stop by the stream and I'll try to give you decent answers as, as to the best of my ability. Thank you all for watching. You guys have an excellent day.